Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. A couple of announcements about life together here at All Saints. Um, first of all, if you missed Intergenerational Sunday School last week, uh, we are talking about loving our neighbors, and one of the things that we would like to do as a part of that is to figure out who our All Saints neighbors are and where they live. So you may have noticed on your way in that there is a map of the Madison area out in the narthex, and we are inviting you, there's little slips of paper and pins in the bulletin board, we invite you to write your name on a little slip of paper and then put a pin where you live so we can begin to see where our All Saints faith community lives in the Madison area. So invite you to do that today if you did not have a chance to do that last Sunday. <clears throat> also an invitation, um, it seems like it should be a far way away, but Thanksgiving is just around the corner and we will gather once again for Thanksgiving Eve prayer and pie in the fellowship hall on Wednesday, November 27th. Um, we'll gather at 7 p.m. We'll share in pie and uh, have some prayer while we're enjoying our pie. Uh, down in the fellowship hall, I invite you to join us at 7 o'clock that evening. And if you are able, bring a pie to share. Um, and last but definitely not least, I invite Karen Julesberg to the microphone to share some updates on the Madison Area Jail Ministry with us. Good morning. Morning. Um, Thanksgiving was just mentioned, but jumping ahead a bit, where will you be at Christmas? Who will you be with? <clears throat> Some of God's children will be in the Dane County Jail with probably no one visiting or calling them. Their only awareness that it is Christmas could well be a Christmas card from one of us or from another area church member. Let me read to you what one young man shared after receiving a Christmas card last year. First and foremost, I want to say thanks for the Christmas card I got through the chaplain here at the Dane County Jail. Your message of you are not alone was both timely and well received. In point of fact, it was just the message I needed to hear at that time. While it didn't necessarily counteract my Christmas blues of being away from my kids and facing two years because of probation violations, it did bring joy to my heart that a perfect stranger would take the time to reach out to me. By the providence of our God, the message I received was just the message I needed to keep going and refresh my perspective. I would be, like to extend a very heartfelt thank you and well wishes to all who made it possible. The jail chaplain gets many such positive comments about the impact of the messages in the Christmas cards. He says that the women and men in jail read and reread their cards and many keep them even after they've left jail. During our fellowship hour next Sunday, we will again have a chance to bring joy to those in jail while enjoying a festive and fun time together. At the Christmas Cookies Carols and Card event, we will enjoy tasty Christmas goodies as carols play in the background and we write personalized messages in Christmas cards for those in jail. If you can't join us next week, there's a basket on the table in the narthex with Christmas cards and the guidelines inside each of the cards. Please take time to read um, the guidelines through because there have been a couple of major changes in the guidelines this year. 
Um, you can then return the cards um, next Sunday. Uh, that's our deadline. Um, the relatively short time that each of us will take to write these messages can have a lasting impact. So think about the time it will take you and what it might mean to someone else. So um, it will make a difference and our social justice team thanks you for participating in either writing cards at home or in coming next Sunday for a fun time. Um, just another note, um, winter clothing is desperately needed at the jail and there are some bins out there in the narthex for you to return winter clothing for both men and women. Um, many of the men and women come into jail in the spring or summer and they then leave the jail in the winter and with nothing and sometimes not even a light jacket but only a shirt. So um, keep that in mind if you have time this week as you're browsing through your closets and organizing them as we all should be doing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Um, normally I would move to the center for our confession forgiveness, but I just realized I didn't put my microphone on, so I'm gonna do that from right here, and then we'll go grab my microphone during our gathering hymn. I invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning and our end. Amen. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal one, robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in its spirit, and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of the river, that we may live just and generous lives for the good of the world and the care of our neighbors, following the miserable way of Jesus. These words are trustworthy and true. <clears throat> Jesus bore our sins once and for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake, you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, you show forth your almighty power chiefly by reaching out to us in mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace. Strengthen our trust in your promises. And bring all the world to share in the treasures that come through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading is from Kings, chapter 1, verse 17, beginning, I'm um, sorry, with verses 8 through 16. A reading from First Kings. The word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go down now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and Prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elisha said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elisha said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not empty, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elisha. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response of reading today is from Psalm 146. <laughs> Alleluia. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to earth. And in that day, their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who are hungry. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Hebrews. Chapter 9, beginning with the 24th verse. A reading from Hebrews. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, <clears throat> as the high priest enters the holy place year after year, with blood that is not his own. For then... He would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once and after that the judgment, 
So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. jug of oil run out. 
if she helps him out, gives him some of what she is making. And that's truly what happens. A miracle that allows Elijah, the widow, and her son to survive. But in our gospel story for today, Jesus does no such thing for the widow who gives all she had to the treasure. Is she offering her last, knowing that death is coming soon for her? And if that is the case, would Jesus really be lifting her up as a role model? Surely not the Jesus I know. But if he's not lifting her up as a role model, what's his goal in drawing attention to her? While he does point her out to his disciples, he doesn't actually do anything for her in that moment. There is no miracle for this widow, no loaves and fish for her to take home and dine upon, no transformative conversation like he has with the woman at the well, no stretching of oil and meal to last as long as they need, at least as far as we know. No personal interaction with Jesus at all, just him pointing to her from across the room. That part is hard for me to swallow, but perhaps it is a reminder for us that we are God's hands and feet in the world. And Jesus is not the only one who calls to care for the orphan and the widow. We are called to love as Jesus loves. I think it's important to note what Jesus does and doesn't say about this widow. Contrary to all of those stewardship sermons you may have heard on this text over the years, Jesus never commends this widow. He never applauds her sacrifice or invites us to follow in her footsteps. He simply notices her and tells his disciples to notice her too. As Jesus is watching the treasury, he sees Many rich people put in large sums. He doesn't draw attention to them. Instead, he draws attention to the widow who puts in all she has to live on. Jesus sees both the wealthy and the poor. But he draws attention to the poor because it's easy for us to not see them. In her sermon on this text, Pastor Lisa Pressman starts with the lyrics with lyrics from the musical Chicago. Everyone gets noticed now and then, unless that person should be invisible, inconsequential me. Mr. Cellophane should have been my name, because you can look right through me, walk right past me, and never know I'm there. Have you ever felt like that? That you're invisible? inconsequential? If not, consider yourself fortunate. In those times when we feel invisible, we can be assured that Jesus does see us and love us. But Jesus also calls us to see those who may otherwise be invisible to us. Who are those people for us today? Who are those people that we sometimes do not see, that we treat as selfie. And how can we see like Jesus? It all comes back to those greatest of commandments, loving God and our neighbors with all that we have and all that we are. And in order to love our neighbors, we need to see them first, all of them. We need to see like Jesus. Our gospel for today started with Jesus warning those listening to beware of scribes who were in it for the fame and fortune. Those who would gladly accept the last that a widow had to offer and to live on, so that they could prance about in fancy robes and get the best seats at different events. Those who devour widows' houses. Then Jesus sees this widow and points her out. Not as a role model for us, but as a victim of that corrupt system 
as someone we might be tempted to think of as invisible or inconsequential. The temple has been given the responsibility to care for widows and orphans specifically, and here are the scribes taking advantage of the very ones they're called to protect and care for. In Jesus' eyes, no one is invisible or inconsequential. Each and every person is a beloved child of God with their own individual wants and needs, passions, and experiences. And we are called to see each person as a unique, special, gifted child of God, not just someone who is adding to the offering each week. And yet, just as there were in Jesus' day, there are systems in place that keep these folks on the margins, that cause them to appear invisible. But Jesus draws our attention to those who can be sometimes invisible and reminds us that they too are our neighbors, worthy of God's love and of ours. This past week has been full of high emotions. But regardless of the outcome of our election, our call as followers of Jesus remains the same. <clears throat> to love God. To love people. To watch for the lost and forsaken and truly see them as beloved children of God. To do justice. To love kindness. And to walk humbly with our God. See like Jesus. Love like Jesus.
of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried, and descended to the heaven. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. <clears throat> Renew your church, O God. Make us servants to one another for the sake of the gospel. Instill a heart for service and a passion for justice in our bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders. In us all. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Sustain the earth and seas and all that is in them. Kindle in us a reverent all awe for all creatures, great and small, and strengthen us in our pursuit of climate justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. <clears throat> Renew the nations, O God. Heal our nation's veterans from unseen wounds of war. Tend to their trauma and soothe burdened consciences. Guide leaders of the world to end conflict and pursue peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your people, O God. Protect those in our communities who are vulnerable or ill, especially Diane, Kathleen, Patty, Larry, John, and all those we name before you now, aloud or silent. Company persons who are unemployed or underemployed, children who are in foster care, and those who live alone, watch over and uphold them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O oh God. Give us clarity in our mission and boldness in our witness. Bless our ministries that attend to basic needs of any who lack sufficient resources that all may live with dignity. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Happy are those whose help was in you. We give thanks for all your faithful ones who praised you as their God all their life long. As we eagerly wait for you, inspire us by their lives of service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, Trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us share signs of peace with one another. Yes, peace. Peace. allergies, but I don't know.
Thank you. 
are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Goodness is stronger than evil. Life is stronger than death. Taste the goodness and life of God. Come, for all are one. Please.
Please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have spread before us a feast of rich food and drink. In the body and blood of your Son, now send us out to labor with you in service to the world you have made and among the people whom you have made your home. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The love of God who created you, the mercy of Jesus Christ who died for you. The power of the Holy Spirit who strengthens you, keep you at one with all the faithful, and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.